Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our second uh, Zoom meeting for box show artists. Um, I'm Jenny Lin, um, and I'm the coordinator of the box show this year. It's my first year in this role, so um, thank you in advance for all your patience. Um, I'm also a new member of Gallery Route One. I joined last July, and um, and just I'm really excited to be a part of this organization. It's um, just inspiring to work with so many wonderful artists, and I love the mission of freedom in the visual arts, social justice, and working with the Latino pro, uh, photo project and teaching art in the schools so that, um, a focus on ecology. So I wanted to thank you just for your participation in the box show and being willing to make contri contribute your creativity to Gallery One. Um, so now I'm gonna, um, Bikisa is our moderator and so, um, I'll let her take the show. Thank you for coming. I will unmute myself and moderate. So welcome everybody. I really uh, wanna say something about what's going on in the world and we know it's going on even though we're thinking about boxes all the time now. But um, I just feel like it's a pivotal moment in time. And I just wanted to show a, a really beautiful uh, portrait of Brianna Taylor, who was the EMT that was uh, murdered. And um, it was, it's an image by a friend of mine, Janie Fritchie, who did it. And uh, Shelly's going to bring it up just to show you. Yeah. So I really love this and I just wanted to share it with you. And I'm just thinking this is the, something that's uh, been very difficult. And hopefully the box show is gonna bring some relief in a, in a lot of ways to people. And so thank you all for being all beloved box artists. Thank you in advance. We hope that this Zoom featuring Larry Rippey, Molly Ray, Kathy Calloway, Shelly Rugg, and me will help you to have a great box experience and create a unique and lasting and well-loved box. So um, thank you all for joining. And um, I'd like to introduce Larry Rippey and Molly Ray. They are collaborators in life and in art. Larry, ex-underground Bay Area cartoonist and teacher, currently the visual arts coordinator to the San Geronimo Valley Community Center, and Molly, portrait painter and teacher, met over 27 years ago and were immediately drawn to each other through the interest in art and music. Larry and Molly are gonna talk about a partnership in art. So without further ado, take it away. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm Larry. Okay, okay, there we are. Hi. Oh. She's Molly. Hi, Molly. And um, we're pleased to be here. We've been um, doing the box show, as we were just saying, kind of offline. I think we've been involved since about 2002. So we're kind of been engaged in this for some time. I think the first one I probably did by myself, but we started collaborating immediately afterwards on, on the boxes. And um, every year we've done them together somehow. And, and that it's quite a challenge every year because uh, as Nakisa was saying, I, I come from kind of a graphics background. I've done a lot of graphic arts and, and the, the cartooning and, and printmaking, that sort of thing. And uh, Molly's a painter and comes from a very different background and tradition and uh, very different approaches. And so coming together to do art together has always been very tricky and always comes up with these sort of unexpected <laughs> outcomes. Uh, I, I think of us as working uh, on this kind of spectrum of me way over here and she's way over there. And sometimes it looks more like me than Molly, and sometimes it looks more like Molly than me. And uh, I think what's really satisfying is when we get some kind of mashup in between that, that kind of 
brings our aesthetics together and our sensibilities together, um, uh, which, and we just never know quite where it's going to go. Um, and you have anything to say on that? Well, just given um, Larry's ease with line drawing and um, how we end up creating our boxes, it just falls to him actually um, most of the time creating these wonderful images that um, he cuts out them with balsa wood and then hands over to me and then I'll be doing the painting of it and trying to give it some kind of um, depth or feeling with color. So um, Larry's very comfortable in working in black and white and I'm not. So it's kind of a, it is kind of a yeah. push for us to work together. Yeah, How I, I kind of see in black and white. So, I mean, I have no capacity for, <laughs> for doing painting and the sort of modeling elements that are involved in painting are very alien to me. So it's, it's really, uh, like I said, it's kind of an interesting collision. It's like two art trucks crashing into each <laughs> other. Whatever lands on the street is what we did. But we always have fun doing it. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. yeah you know. Tear our hair off. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did you want to? Well, I, we did. We have um, a blog that we've been doing for ages also where we put things on there. And we put a lot of the box shows on there. And hopefully Shelly has. There it is. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Is that the first? That's from um, yeah. one we did that had. To, it was actually called A Mazed Minotaur. And. This one leads heavily into Molly's painting because it's supposed to be sort of Minoan style uh, imagery. Can we just flick through them, Shelly? Ooh, whoa, oh. a little too fast. Oh, now, we, can we do it? Can we? No, no we Shelley, don't have let's do it. Okay. okay, yeah. So um, you want to go next? Well, do you want to talk about um, this is all you here? Yeah, it's just actually the. Whoa. Um, whoa. <laughs> The, the paintings that we saw when we were in Crete, they're very flat. So they're not, um, the way they paint is not to create three-dimensional, except for on their statues, which we don't even get to see because the paint's all gone. But so th this I painted flat. And um, so we can go to the next one. No, it kind of hopped over yeah. one there. Oh, whoa, well, whoa. let's go back to the at least yeah. to the minotaur. Let's get one, two, three. Sorry guys, it's a very sensitive touchpad. Yeah. I, I, I can't seem to control. Go to number five and then six. One, two, three, four, five. Oops. And then Excellent. and then go to six. Oh, and there's okay. there's Larry's sketch of the minotaur and how he develops it. And then number seven would be the balsa wood. Actually, I think that oh, that's we didn't that. actually do balsa wood for what that. We, we did on we did it on a heavy art paper that you oh, painted on. Okay, so next 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 image, please. Yeah, and there's the painting of that. Yeah, and then do we I have? I wonder. It? I don't see the finished product in any of these, right. which is unfortunate. But anyway, the oh, there we go. So yeah. the minotaur went inside oh, yeah, the right. the tomb, and then I don't know if you can see the sides or not anymore. But all the sides are the Minoan style painting. Uh, that Molly did as well. So yeah, and the ball is actually coming out. The minotaur is actually coming out of the box, which is kind of cool. So and then the, you want to go to the next box? I think so. If you want. Yeah. Oh, we did it. Okay. Yeah, this is a, one of my favorite favorites. This is uh, Molly also plays music with a bunch of pickers and uh, John Peterson. I think an amazing grace gave yeah. her a banjo neck, which we put on the box and created a little hillbilly scene in there. And what was the name of this one? It has a long name. We'll have to remember that. Why don't yeah. you see if we can get to the box itself? You're the go yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Which... You could flip through a little bit. You can go to yeah. one more after that. There, so, and then Molly did <laughs> something that's vaguely familiar to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> we did the Starry Night. <laughs> and, uh, that's kind of a rough version of it, but uh, and I think you can keep going just a little bit because this is one that we were going There's through our balsa. balsa wood phase where I would draw these hillbilly characters on balsa wood, which would be cut out, which is pretty simple to cut out if you're careful with an exacto knife, that sort of thing. And it's a piece of thin wood. And then we mounted that as a diorama in the starry, starry night scene. So you can keep going. Oh, look, there's the bass player. Yeah. yeah, he goes in the background. 
So, whoops, there we go. Yeah. So the lighting's not very good on this, but you can see it, this is a three-dimensional scene with the them at a campfire, starry, starry night. And the bass player is actually separated from uh, the guitar and the banjo players by distance. He's because it's um, how they do that. What do you call that when they do that in that Disney productions like or whatever? Yeah, yeah. It's so uh, yeah. It's about he's about an inch farther behind than the guy sitting in the foreground here. Yeah. So this was one approach. I think you can see the oh, there you go. the general effect. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And a very different approach. We I don't know if we have any others on here. The next one is put do the next one and you'll see it hanging at the group show. <laughs> there we go with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, you can try and show the. Dog. I'm going to show. Oh, you don't know if you can. Oh, who's that guy? That's. Larry. <laughs> Some years ago. I'm going to try to show you, this is a different one that is kind of very heavy molly, where it's actually, it's not a diorama in the same sense of, it's not the three-dimensional effect she painted, I believe, right? No, I just painted on inside the box. You painted inside the box. With a ball attached to a stick hanging out in front, because that, that's our dog, and he loved to play ball. If you can believe that. Yeah. And it's called Fetch. Yeah. That's a different approach. That year, that was a long time ago. That was actually kind of resonates because it was during the period of the swine flu and I was in bed during all of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so that one's about 95% Molly, I think. Mm. I think I sketched something on a napkin once and then she did the rest. Um, so we have, our, what? did you want to show that oh, one? Here's, we know. can show you one that we have at home. This is called the champ. Oh, anyway. and, uh, so there he is there, and then there's the gloves, and we added a little hanging <laughs> thing there. So I actually really like this one. For some reason, um, Larry's not too thrilled with it, but I really appreciate it. So have we, have we, well, we given, have given you our- Actually, I could recommend that you, if you visited our blog, you could probably see a lot of these from days gone by. I do want to show this one, just for the heck of it. Because it, it, just because it's so different than some of the others you saw, but we just made it out of pretty much found objects, I think it was called Robox. And I think- um, Betty Wilson. Yeah. She has it, yeah. Uh, Betty Wolcock. Oh, Wolcock, sorry. Uh, purchased that one eventually. Sorry, so that's Betty. somewhere out there in the West, anyway. Let's see. No, oh, that's um, our Jack in the Box with Jack Kerouac. Uh, These are actually shredded parts of uh, photocopies of his writing <laughs> in the box. So this was definitely, uh, and there's Jack. I love that box. Oh, you remember? And then uh, the images on the side are all scenes from the subterraneans and different writings of his. I didn't mean to show you this one. It just showed up. I'm not going to go on. I love that. But anyway. Yeah. We well, did document the, our process on a lot of the boxes um, on our on our own little website there. But uh, anyway, it's always sort of starts off as kind of a pain. You know, when you get the blank box, it's always, like, what am I gonna do with this thing? And we sit around for a long time um, and just stare at it. And, uh, I really enjoyed what we did last year because we didn't go through that sort of process. We just started collecting odd objects and the object started suggesting what the box was going to be, and it came out very different. Again, it was very painterly because Molly. Which one was that one? Oh yeah, the one yeah. with the um, tree. But okay, um, I think we're at five minutes. Are we at oh, five yeah. minutes? Yes, that's why I have my finger here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see the finger. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. We can go on. Uh, <laughs> no. We will so, actually know you can. No, <laughs> and, and there's really no because your... you get the idea. Anyway. Give us and I know that Molly has soon. to leave because she has to deliver food. She's such a good yeah, person. And I'm you guys, sorry, it, it's great. But Larry's going to stay. And we're going to open it up to question and answers. And I've been looking over the crowd. And I see a lot of you have come back for more. So thank you for being valiant box artists. I really do appreciate that you're here. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit. Of, I've been introduced by Jenny Lynn, I believe, right? So I don't have to introduce myself again. You know about me and you know that everything is about me in my world. It is the box of 
Vikisa. And so maybe Shelly can just run through mine and you can see that there's, with my boxes, there's kind of a theme and it's really what's going on in my life or around my life in the world. It, but it's, they're very personal to me, but actually people relate to them quite often and spend money on them, which makes me really happy for the gallery. But I guess I've done if the box show is 20 years old, I've done 20 boxes. And if the box show is 22 years old, which I'm not quite sure, I think 22, I've done 22. And it started out where we were asked to invite three people. And I remember I was really opposed to asking my friends to, to make something and give it up and spend it, you know, spend their money on, on p things to put in the box. And I was so appreciative that friends did it. And now we have over 400 people that are signing up for the box and we have you guys and it's so appreciated. And one of the things I've learned about box making is I just like to think about it for a while and do some sketches and just keep on um, looking at what's happening and come up with a, you know, kind of one of focus. Um, and I usually have some kind of a statement this is me teaching in the artisan schools and actually the portraits are up on the on the on the uh, windows at gallery route one that I did with artists in the schools and Frida Kahlo style self reflective portraits I'm really proud of that I'm so proud of that that I made myself in this box as Frida Kahlo which I do and um, I use a lot of fabric and glue. And I actually am very, very happy because this is Fimo. And you know, with Fimo or um, Sculpey, you have certain colors that you can use, but you don't have a lot of choices of color. And the reason that I'm so hooked on paper clay, and if you keep going, Shelly, you can just keep uh, moving them. Yeah. It's when I got into the paper clay that I get a more kind of realistic, uh, color thing because I'm using the paper clay and then sealing it with a lot of acrylic paint. And I use a little armature. I use some copper wire or paper or even um, um, tin foil as an armature and I build it up so that I don't have to use a lot of paper clay. And I find that it holds very well and I, I really enjoy working with it. You can work with it for a long time if you keep wetting it. I'm just very, very big on paper clay. So um, this is Rosebud and she's my dog and she just takes up too much space. <laughs> but this, um, as you can see, this is a fairly large figure and that, that's made out of paper clay too. Now she's not standing up on two legs, but I think it really works. And I do buy, once in a while, I did buy that little lamp and um, my friend LaRonda, I think, gave me that little um, piece of furniture. But mostly everything else, I really do like to make myself. And um, since it, I don't like to sew, I glue. And glue, Lisa, and glue. Mm -hmm. Kathy was showing um, your, your box. Really? Oh, yes. Kathy owns my box. I meant to say that. Isn't that? I'm so happy you have it. What was I thinking? Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> See, such a team. I love that. Thank you. Don't shake it too hard. <laughs> anyway, I think one of the most important things is to think about the lastingness of, of your box and the, and the things that are in it. And I love the idea of putting a cover over it so they don't get dusty, but somehow I just don't do it. I, I like to be able to get in there and see all the stuff that's in there. The other thing I just wanted to talk about really briefly is getting the buzz going. As you know, I send out the press releases and I talk to the press and I try to really get the information out there and talk to people about the box show. And we so appreciate it when all of you do that. We will have, I hope, postcards or posters or things to put up and we'll ask you to take them home and ask you to tell your friends. And I usually send out um, an email to lots of people about what's going on, especially the box show, because remember it is a benefit and we really benefit by you. So I feel like I'm uh, finished. And if you have any questions or answers for me, I'll be happy at the end of, you know, we'll, we'll ask you to put your hand up either just like that. Shelly told me I had to show you. 
I thought you were smarter than that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But also there's this little tricky thing you can do with participants. If you go to the participants place, there's a place where it says, uh, raise your hand. And if you hit that, we'll look and we'll see if you have a hand raised. You have to choose yourself and raise your hand. So without further ado, that was far enough, I think. I'd like to introduce Shelly Rugg, a multi-talented artist, 10 by 10 theater creator and host of the Zoom and coordinator of the GRO or Gallery Route One. And she's doing all this technical stuff, which I really am loving that she can do that. So Shelly, tell us about what I'm hoping you're gonna talk about, the importance of the Bach show and your all right. Um, well, hello, everybody. I'm Shelly, and I'm the Gallery Route One Gallery Coordinator. And I have personally participated in three, three, yeah, three box shows now. And no, no, I'm, I'm sorry, four. <laughs> and um, the first, the first box I made. Uh, didn't come out how I wanted it to at all. I had this real clear vision in my mind. And when I went about actually making it, it just, it wasn't working. And, and so I had to shift gears midstream and, and just make a decision. And, um, and somebody bought my box for a minimum bid. <laughs> so, and then, uh, then the, the next year, I, I really uh, had something to say, and I, I made a box I called Dreaming of a Better World, and um, it was probably when, um, when Trump got elected, and I hope that doesn't offend anyone that um, I felt sad that Trump got elected, but um, anyway, that was the kind of the statement of my box and um and then i i got this desire to paint trees and so i did a box where i painted tree uh on the outside of the box and um that you know as far as sales at the box show that was my most successful piece um one of our our high bidders who comes through and, and throws high bids down on, you know, a handful of boxes. She picked mine that year. And so that was pretty thrilling. And, um, and it, it actually encouraged me as an artist to pursue a whole series, a whole body of work featuring trees. And, um, so that was really thrilling. And, um, and I did again uh, a tree box the following year that also was very successful at the box show and ended up getting uh, the bid raised at the silent, I mean, at the live auction on the last day. So that was, that was really thrilling. Um, so the box show means a lot to Gallery Route One. It's the biggest fundraiser that we have in the year. And this year, of course, you all know how challenging things are for us. Uh, we can't have the gallery open right now. And we're, we're hanging on to the hope that we'll be able to open to some degree enough to actually install the box show so that people can enter the gallery and, and uh, see it in person. And uh, so, so that's what we're hoping for. And uh, we're working on our site protection plan so that we will be able to be safe when we do open. And, um, and as much fun as it is to take this blank box and figure out what to do with it, um, we wanna, you know, really, encourage you to go about making your masterpiece as best you can um it would mean so it'll mean a lot to you it's 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 really quite thrilling to look at the bid sheet and watch bids you know piling up for your box and um so whatever whatever you can think of that um would be amazing. Uh, we're we're excited to and anxious to see it. And um, 
I think I've yammered on enough. I mean, other, I'm, I'm also going to echo Vikisa. Um, whenever you get um, maybe a newsletter from Gallery Route 1 that talks about the box show, uh, share it, forward it. Um, share any uh, social media posts that you see uh, on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and just do your own um, getting the word out. We, we highly appreciate it, and um, we hope that this is going to be one of our more successful box shows, uh, even though we're dealing with a pandemic and civil unrest. And, you know, I could probably go on for a while about all the things that are going on. Uh, oh, don't forget climate change, you know. Uh, we don't want to lose sight of that. So um, I'm going to pass it back now to Vikisa. Well, I thank you, Ke I would, Shelley, we appreciate everything that you're doing to make this happen, and Jenny Lynn and all of you. I'm so happy to see all of these people, especially Nicholas, you got your box. We were worried about you, man. So anyway, everybody's got their boxes, and now I'd like to introduce Kathy Calloway, who has lived in Woodacre for 32 years with her husband and her German shepherds. I started, she says, doing entries in the Wild Book Show, which I love doing. And then my name was finally drawn to get a box. I've done five and this year will be my sixth. And I just appreciate Kathy so much and the, and your, the way you go about it. So take it away. Uh, thank you. Um, I, uh, oh, there's the German, one German Shepherd right there. Um, I think we have to, most of us cogitate for quite a while when we have our boxes in front of us about what are we going to do. And um, Shelly, if you want to show the first one, um, I, this one actually my husband helped me with because he did the copper snake. And so this was a, kind of a comment on um, the obsession with technology. So this was six years ago. And so you can see she's holding an actual apple and then of course the apple icon. And he, you can't see very well, is holding his uh, iPhone and is not interested in her anymore because he has his iPhone. And had the, we cut up, that's the first time I cut a hole and we cut the hole in the top of the box so the tree could grow out of there and the snake could come down. Um, and I, I mean, I actually like having the confines of a box, given a box, I mean, here's your boundary, you have to use the box. Okay, what am I going to do with this box? So the next one, um, oh, this was a few years later, but this is kind of, this is one of my political comments. Um, this is, some of you know that I organized the postcards out in West Marin, postcard writing. So this is a portable um, postcard toolbox. And my husband helped me with this one with the wrought iron handle. And it had all the things you need, stamps and postcards and pens and uh, addresses of the people to write and quotes, inspiring quotes on it. I had, I enjoyed doing that one. And the next one would be, oh, this was actually my favorite one. And this is the Museum of Unnatural History. And I made up a story about in 1960, this farmer and his dog, um, dug up, and Larry, you might remember this from <laughs> from the space capsule that was they buried at the school or something, and the kids came up and whose son? Joseph's son. Joseph's son actually found the Twinkie and ate it after it had been buried all those years. So anyway, this is a story of Twinkies, and the dog ate it, and he was glad the dog didn't die because the Twinkie was a million years old. So this was like stuff in my studio, and this is the stuff I love about doing a box, is I just, I'm looking for something to make a Twinkie out of. And so what do I have? Okay, mm, I have styrofoam. Okay, let's do that. That doesn't look right. Okay, let's sand the styrofoam. That's kind of a disgusting thing to do, but it made the right texture. And um, then I found the little pedestal and various things. And I just loved doing this. It reminded me of going to the museum in um, Los Angeles, um, the really, really odd one. I forget the name of it, that has all these made up history things. Um, next one. Okay, this is when I started, um, actually, 
uh, the set, this is the second one I did that was a recipe. This was last year's box. And so I had my husband cut up the box for me in these various shapes and then um, write the recipe, paint the stuff, make a little pie. Um, I just love doing that. And it's um, figuring out how to actually letter it on there with the right kind of pen that's not going to fade and yet um, not smear off. And I mean, there are a lot of technical challenges when, for me when I'm doing these boxes. And that's the process I like because I figure I learn something each time. And you can go to the next one. Okay, that's this one. And if you want to sh shoot back to me, this, my, this is the only one that I know who actually purchased a box. I mean, my boxes were bought, but I don't know where they went except for this one. And this is my neighbor bought this. And so this is, you can see, I've, you know, put little eye screws and a little chain. And then this is how I made, and again, styrofoam. Don't underestimate the power of styrofoam. Uh, becomes this multi-layered cake that my sister actually is famous for. Um, that was really fun to do. And is that the last one? I can't remember. Shelly, was that it? I think, was that five? Might've been. Um, so that's all, that's all I have to say, except that it's um, a joy to do these. And uh, I realized that having been trained for many years, many, many years ago in much more of a two-dimensional art, um, I realize now in the past number of years, I am actually more three-dimensional. I really like working three-dimensionally and building little things. And um, when I realized that, I also realized that goes back to my childhood of making little mouse houses and doll houses and that I really enjoy that aspect of the boxes. Well, I love your boxes. I think I what I love about them is how pristine they are. They're so clean and you take apart the box, which is an, another thing that I, I really like that some people don't do. I'm scared. <laughs> but, but, well, don't do it alone. <laughs> oh, is that how it works? Well, really, uh, thank you for joining us. And right now, I'd like to, um, I have an announcement that I'm going to have my first radio show uh, since I stopped because of the pandemic, Coastal Airwaves rises again. And June 18th, Thursday, 4 p.m., I'll have box artists Shook Chang and LaRonda Bucchiarelli. And I think it's going to be really fun and full of surprises. So kwmr.org, stay tuned. Uh, do we have any other announcements before I open it up to questions and answers, Shelley or Jenny Lynn? Uh, I think that um, we just want to remind people that for the Q&A section, they want to maybe change their view to um, gallery view so that they can see yeah. everybody. And, and um, that's what I'm doing. I'm glad so to see the you. upper right hand corner, there's a little grid. So you want to make sure you're in gallery view. And then I think we can go forward with Q&A. Yes. And remember, if you want to raise your hand, you can go to the participant or just raise your hand. So, oh, I see, Gail. Go, Gail. Well, you have to do Okay. Okay. I Good. would like to have Molly Ray and Larry's blog information, please. The blog. Molly, uh, Larry, what's your blog info? If you just type in Larry Rippey and Molly Ray Art, you should go to it. How do you spell your last name, Larry? R-I-P-P-E-E -E for Rippy. You can put it in the chat, okay. Larry. Um, good that's idea. a good idea. Click yeah. the chat but at the bottom and then type in the blog's address. Yeah, and if you go to the blog, you, would, you should go to the little search box in the corner and then you can search out the different, if you put in box show, you'll find some of the box shows. Okay, thank you. Years. And anybody else have a question or answer? Uh, wait, I'm going to look on the chat and see. I, I now know how to do this stuff, I think. <laughs> Every time I say that, it's the curse of 
Wow, you guys, you're all set. Is everybody got their, raise your hand if you got your box ID and you're ready to go. Well, Nicholas wants to say something. Wait, wait he, I don't see him doing anything. He raised his hand. Let me maybe see only, Maybe I'm the only one that yeah, can there see you him. go. Okay, go, Nicholas. I'm trying to unmute him, but it's not working. He has to unmute himself, I think. Unmute there you go. He's good. He's there good. There you go. Someone mentioned the experience of taking apart the box, and I wonder if they had anything more to say about how they do that. Good question. Um, who want? Do you want to talk about how you took the box apart, Kathy? Unmute y'all. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, well, I take it down to my husband's shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, He's laughing at me as I speak. And he just um, takes the saw and, you know, chops where I tell him I draw the little lines because I kind of visualize it prior to what I need. And then um, it, you know, comes apart that way. You need a power tool. And then I sand the edges and, you know, I just kind of, chop, you know, saw it up, basically. I see Leo's got his box with his things. I don't think that's going to be that great, Leo. <laughs> wow. I don't know. We all have a cup I with I tell you all, I'm done. Here, I'm done. I'm going to submit yeah. tomorrow. Just kidding. I hope <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I did have a meeting with, uh, or a, a phone call with my daughter who purchased a ticket that won me the privilege of doing this box and we had a good discussion today about how to approach it uh, good brainstorming i guess you call it uh it, it was nice and between my daughter and my wife i think we will <clears throat> and my ability to cut up a box with a saw we'll come up to something we have a good direction right now but I'm not going to reveal it because it may change. <laughs> That's it. I just uh, put a direct link to Larry and Molly's blog spot in the chat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What about you, yeah. Natalie? Who's got, what about Patricia? Come on, who, anybody got anything? If not, why not? No, okay, LeBron oh, can always be counted on. I'm count timing you. Go ahead. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so um, I can. Ha I have a couple of suggestions. So for new artists, or even you know you that have been here around for a while doing the box show, what helps me is when I start doing my box, I actually start taking pictures of it before, during, and after, because that is one way of looking at it through a different set of eyes. When you're when the box is in front of you and you're working on it all the time, you can you see that that's all that you see. Sometimes it just helps to back away from that kind of vision, take a picture of it go off and have dinner, come back and look at your pictures, and then you'll be able to see either something that you want to tweak or some little flaw or something <laughs> really picks up a lot of um, different things that you wouldn't think it, it would have that would happen. So that was my suggestion to everyone else. LaRonda, will you talk about glues? I'm really, um, I've been just in love with Gorilla Glue because it doesn't have those, uh, you know, like hot glue, I think hot glue is okay for something that's going to be really stationary, but it does kind of come apart at some time in some ways. And there's also those little hairy things that happen. Whereas I'm just in love with the Gorilla Glue. I have about 20 kinds of glue. I know that you use a pH, right? P PVA glue. P and I finally used it. One of the good things about it is it doesn't leak through things. It's right. very, right? Right, and it's also non-toxic. It's also archivally um, stable. And this is one of the things that, that I've used for, quite, for a long while. Actually, it came from um, a company in oh, Arizona that does glitter. And that's what they use to get glitter on to whatever, other than cloth. They have a special glue for that. So from that, that's always my go-to first 
Mm -hmm. then it depends on what the what you're gluing so a really good website if you don't know what to use a really good website is called this to that and um shelly i'll try to find it and then put it in down here in the chat it's a really really great website because you can just put look i have paper and i want to glue it to plastic you know what's a good what's a good thing to use for that? And they'll give you a list of certain things to use. A lot of it you could find like at Michael's or at any, really any place else. Um, the only other thing that I've done this past year is watch a art restorer called Julian Bumgarden out of Chicago. And what's interesting, he does restoration of just pa mostly paintings, but it's what's on the paintings that started to give me some insight, the ones that he had to restore, the things that you're not supposed to use. So that was one thing that I really, I learned a lot just from watching him trying to restore a painting using something that you're not supposed to use. So if you're looking for longevity on your art project or longevity for the person that ends up with your art, that's the, that's the, those are the things that I think of now. You Can I say something about glue? That. Go you ahead, know, Gail. Um, I've, I've been using something called Wellbond because I've had some heavy pieces that have been glued on and it's white and it comes over out clear and it's really, really strong because I don't want to use the E6000 because it's so toxic. Um, but there is also something called Miracle Muck and you can glue pieces and things onto oil paintings with it. And, and that's a really hard thing to find. And Inez I think I uses it. I think I got that from Inez. Yeah, she I think, uses yes. it. She's yeah, big so on I, the miracle I, muck. Yeah. And so I bought that too. So I have a drawer full of I have a gorilla glue and zap and PVA and Elmer's and yes and you know. I, know I really use a... the well I use, I really use the well bond more than anything. Well, we, the only other question we had, and we don't have an answer for it, and you might want to know about it, is the size restriction. So Jenny Lynn oh. is going to send that out to you. I can't remember what it was, uh, but there is a size restriction. And remember, no animals, no batteries, <laughs> no, <laughs> no plants, right? And I think that's it. No, that's not it. Oh, wait. It's, it's almost yeah. it. Oh, no, yeah, Rhonda, I was counting on you. Go ahead. What's okay, the so uh, yeah. the list is no live animals, no live plants, no toxic materials, no batteries, no self-promoting. Um, no. I think the box and Shelly are, are uh, you know, one. To, I, I don't have the sheet in front of me, but I think the width cannot be any wider than 30 inches. Is that correct? That's what Jenny Lynn is, thought. So that yeah. might be it. And the height cannot be any higher than 40 inches. But I'm not, I'm not positive about that because I got my box a little bit earlier so I didn't get the, the cheat sheet. So if, Je if uh, Shelly or, or Jenny- We're gonna, if, we're gonna um, I think Jenny Lynn and I will review the, um, what the limitations are and then send an email out to everyone because I think uh, everybody- <laughs> wants to be clear yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. And anybody else have anything else they want to be clear about? Yes, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, out of, of the different rules and sizes and, and everything. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and the box, right? It's, it's got, uh, let's see, four, five sides and one side is open. And you know, which way are you going to use it? Are you going to use it so that you put things inside of it? Are you going to flip it around and just, you know, do stuff on the outside of it? Are you going to lay it down? Are you going to, you know, what are you going to do with the, the form of the box? And, you know, for me, I thought, well, I, I'm a painter, so I'm going to make a painting on this box. Um, but this year I'm starting to think maybe I need to branch out <laughs> and <laughs> do, do a, a mixed media piece. And so that's kind of where my wheels are turning right now. Um, I, I think I might stay with the, a, 
the tree series, but this time actually have branches come out the top of the box. I'm, we'll see. <laughs> it sounds good. It is nice to have like a, some kind of a, a series of some, some kind of connection. It's not, I just like that. And it, it's also, it's always exciting to see when people morph their box so that you, you know, you almost don't see the box anymore. Um, yeah. Yeah. And some, of you, some of you were here last, last week, but for those of you who missed it, um, we had Xander Weaver Skull on and what Xander does every year is he takes his box and uh, oh. breaks it up into little pieces and burns it, turns it into charcoal, then grinds the charcoal down and adds resin to it and um, <laughs> and makes his own ink. And then he makes a drawing. Yeah. And so, you know, I know many times I'm like, what's the deal with this drawing at the box show? Like, I don't get it. Um, and so when you find out, it's it's really interesting to know that he drew with the box. <laughs> Kelly, I, 22 years or 20 years, I have been answering somebody, there is no box in here. Where is this box? And there's always, you know, when it, it's hilarious. And uh, I, I love that. Well, it falls, it falls into our criteria of using the box in the final piece. But in it just doesn't way, say how much of the box. to be in, right, in, in there. Nicholas, did you want to say something? He oh, I, I just never, old. I never lowered your hand. There we go. Yeah, that was an old thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you going to do a photograph again, Nicholas, this year? Yeah, I expect uh, I'll use a photo of the Church of the Ascension in Oakland. And, and where are you? What's your background there? That is the Gallery Route 1 Annex. That's just what I thought. It looks incredibly familiar. Wow. So we're cool. looking at the box show right now. Yes, you are. Photographers. <laughs> so are you the one that did the orb? Yes. The photo yes. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. love that. That Back was so amazing. Thank you. Well, there's a lot of amazing box artists. And do we, what's the tentative date? Do, do you, didn't you have an actual tentative date that you guys were putting out or not yet? I can't remember. Well, I think that, well, Jenny Lynn can answer. For, for what, the return date of the boxes or? For act, no, for, well, you might want to mention that, but the, for the actual, uh, if we can open up for putting it, putting this show up. I mean, for having it opening is what I mean. Yeah, it's the, um, it's the Friday after that, so I think it's the 31st of July. Um, or it might be August 1st. It might be August 1st, yeah. It's the, you know, being consigned on Sunday and Monday, and then it's the following. I like Friday. August 1st. I like August because when I, this pandemic, I have always felt just that August was when, gonna, when it was going to open up. So I hope that's, I hope I'm right about that. And it's my birthday month, so... Oh, well, it's all about you. We, we have to remember that. Oh, yeah. No, you don't have to remember. I'll remind you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> My friend who's no longer here to control me, Goldie, she always used to say, but enough about you. <laughs> well, hey, after all. Nicholas, did you want to say something? I do. I do have a question now. Uh, since you mentioned the picture I took in, in the gallery, um, considering, you know, sometimes a I try to take a picture out in the larger section of the gallery and it's it's a little bit of a logistical issue to uh, yeah. to take the picture when there's more than a couple people. Would there be an opportunity for individual viewing of the box show since we're limited on the number of people who can attend? Yeah, we're, we're thinking that's, we have a lot of different, uh, well, there are a lot of just different scenarios of what could happen. One is that we'll install the show and it'll be open by appointment. Um, we're likely going to have to have just a limited number of people in at a time, maybe 20. But um, but because the numbers of people entering the gallery are most likely going to be limited, this year, I'm sure that there'll be that kind of opportunity. We'll make it happen for you, Nicholas, if you promise to make a great picture and lend it to <laughs> us. Sure, thank you. One, one, one other, uh, not so much a question, is perhaps a suggestion. Um, you see on the coverage of the protest people doing streaming of uh, virtual 
participation. People use GoPro cameras that are pretty good at uh, giving you a, a, a live action 360 image. If someone is going to do a tour, perhaps it could be a virtual tour. And we could talk about making that happen. There is that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if we have to, I mean, we, we want to have it online anyway. Of course. But uh, if we have to get really crazy, we'll do it. We'll do anything <laughs> to make this happen, right? Right. We understand that you all will too. So uh, let me get clear, uh, Nicholas. Are you saying you're offering to help if we if we want to do that? Yes, I, I have I have some logistical limitations right now. My car is still on uh, stay at home orders. The the parking garage with where I park on a monthly basis is uh, not a vital business. So I, I can only get my car during. Uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Right now, I can't get the car on the weekends. I expect that'll change in the coming weeks, though. Great. Let's <laughs> let's. I, I would love to at least uh, have the opportunity to help. Yes, we would. That would be thank you. thank you. Really, everybody, you the opportunity to help is open. <laughs> help as much as possible. Okay. Um, can can I just ask how helpful this is to you? Does anybody um, feel like just commenting or just giving me a, a thumbs up or? Oh, nice. Thank you. I have, I'm still on audio. So if I could respond, um, I'm a lot of us are confined to a small place with a small number of people. I um, I'm can find in my own apartment and uh, the social interaction with with this group and with my coworkers is one of the things that has uh, helped me a lot so I appreciate that and also it's you know it's nice to see you all nice to get information about the box show thank you Nicholas yeah. thank you and I'm confined for the most part the first time only time I've been out was I drove to Point Reyes got my box and came right back that was it <laughs> Well, that was the most important thing you could do. Yeah, obviously. well, and, and so I don't make up my mind now. I have no idea what I'm going to do, but this is really helpful. It's like a brainstorming. Oh, that's kind of so thing. great. I'm really that's, glad yeah. to hear that. I'm inspired. Yeah. I'm inspired. Yeah. yeah, it makes me think about it because I haven't even thought about it. I think, oh, that's down the line. Mm -hmm. I know it can be really daunting to look at that plain wooden box and try to imagine, imagine you know i find in the trunk of the car still <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually think, out. it's screaming take me out I'm, i am going to take it out yeah i like to have mine sitting out where i can see it and i walk by it and i look at it and turn it different directions <clears throat> well i moved to a much smaller space i moved in with my daughter there's not much place many places that i can take it out and look at it and LaRonda, uh, your suggestion, I have so many photographs of my work in process. Mm. And it really, really helps. Yeah, it does. It, it does. Yeah. Well, it was fun to see those that Kathy made too, to see them in process and Larry and, and Molly's. You know, it's, it's fun to see how they start. So I guess there's going to be a lot of uh, artist profile, profiles on our website. And you might, you know, send somebody there that uh, is interested because um, we do have this online show of uh, the gallery artists. It's called Spring 2020. And it's still spring for us, I guess. But anyway, there's a lot happening. There's some great art projects. And yeah, um, check it out and keep in touch. And if anybody has any questions or answers, don't hesitate to ask for help or you know, we really want this to be successful. And it's, this could be the hardest year we've ever had, in my opinion. Are you gonna do this again, this Zoom thing? You know, I, I had a thought about it. I thought maybe, you know, we might should as it's getting closer so people can show where they're at, but I'm not sure. What do you think? Anybody? Well, I like it. Make, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> would, that, would, any, would, you, would any of you come to another one of these uh, meetings? Okay. Yeah, actually, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I was yes, thinking. I that. agree. Yeah, especially for especially for the newer. Two weeks. I'm a newer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. First time. 
First time, first uh, box show. The fila. So yeah, I, I can use all I help. Although I have, I have a plan for my project, but I need to hear ideas and issues like the glue thing. I didn't, I didn't know about that. So yeah, already glue is help. glue is big in my life. Yeah, yeah and about breaking, and about breaking want, up the box. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't want to learn everything the hard way. So I, I take Believe advice from me. other people. It's a big deal, Glue. It yeah. really is. <clears throat> All right. Oh, you know, um, if you guys are still talking, I have a box I want to show you from a long time ago, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Speak amongst yourselves. <laughs> the only glue I haven't heard speak of is goop, which is a flexible glue. Yeah. You want to have sure. flexibility and still have something that's kind of a viscous rather oh, thick okay. glue. It's called goop. I've heard of it. I've never used it. It's one of the Great. few you that I You can use it on your shoes. Yeah, that's what I oh, use. Oh, I it did use yeah. it. It is a shoe glue. I did use it once. Goop. Okay, I wrote it down. Okay, what do you got, Shelly? Okay. Well, I did this piece for a similar kind of show in Long Beach. Wow. And it was wow. all about layering. And so what I have here is behind this shiny black line drawing is a pastel drawing on a separate piece of paper. And then it has lace curtains in front. Uh -huh. And then you can actually turn this knob and change. Oh, wow. The, oh, wow. So you can change the relationship of the front image to the back image. Somebody anyway. else had a rolling one like that, <laughs> a, a, a box. So There's it so had little feet on it. I didn't show this one. I'll show this one. Wait. This one is a, a fun one that I ended up with. How many people have their own box? <laughs> I actually bought, I one. bought back one of my boxes. Um, I know. One year, I really liked the the way it came out, and I felt like the bid wasn't high enough. I didn't want it to go for a low bid, and okay. so I had a friend of mine go and buy the box for me. <laughs> so, I, so I still have it. <laughs> Nicholas, do you have one? I bought my box from last year, the Sphere, and I've <laughs> promised it to the um, just the San Rafael Mission. Um, I, uh, I, I, I believe that I, I believe that. That I, I haven't given it to them. It's still at my box at work, but um, work work has been closed for quite some time, and it'll probably be another month or two before I'm able to go back in. But once once my workplace is back open, and once the mission uh, the, the mission store is open, uh, I did promise that to them, and uh, I'll be bringing it there, and. Uh, with social distancing, probably only 10 people can attend, but if, uh, if, uh, if I have the opportunity, I'll let you know about that opening. But it's, you know, it's just, it's, they're just going to place it there. They have glass cases, they have, they have countertops, Perfect. a place where it can be displayed. And I'm looking forward to that because there's not much room in here, and I don't mean the annex. <laughs> well, I reached out to them, and I never heard back, and I was really bummed because I thought it couldn't be better. So I'm really glad that you did that. That was really cool of you. I'm, I'm liking the idea and I'm looking forward to bringing it to them. Well, when do you think we might do this again? Um, maybe first week of July? 